finally, I want to show you how I used Arduino to connect motion activated sound to the pit droid. Here's a list of components and devices I'll be using in the video. I did switch to uh, the lever wire connectors and they have been awesome. Now in this video I'll be using the MG996R which gives you more torque than the MG995 but they're both good for this project. I'll also be using the HCSR501 PIR motion sensor. I'm using a 5 volt power supply for the servo motors and the LEDs and 9 volts for the Arduino board and the amplifier. If you wanted to use a single 12 volt power supply for this project, you could use 12 volts for the Arduino board and the amplifier and route 12 volts to this 5 volt converter so that you can power your LEDs and your servo motors. With this power supply, I have two 12 volt connections and one of those connections goes to this 5 volt converter. Now you can bypass the terminal blocks here. You can just take your wire straight from the 5 volt converter to the wire lever connectors here for your LED and your motors. And this is 12 volts supplied directly from the power source to the Arduino board and the amplifier. This does operate very well with one 12 volt power supply, but I wouldn't add more than 12 volts to the Arduino Mega R3 board. Now the amplifier can handle 3 to 18 volts, so 12 volts works just fine for that too. If you're keeping components tucked away in the head of your robot, and therefore making your robot head a little heavier, you may need to add a little more voltage to your servo motors, either 6 or 7 volts. The MG996R servos can take up to 7.2 volts, but you should always confirm this with the data sheets of any components that you're using. In this setup, I'm using two old speakers from an LCD TV I threw out. Um, we bought it in 2008. I'm also powering the Arduino board with a 9 volt battery, and I'm using a 9 volt power supply that I have plugged into the wall for the amplifier. Now, anytime the motion sensor detects motion, it's going to do these head movements for 30 seconds, and it will play the uh, pit droid sounds for 30 seconds, and then stop and wait for motion to be detected again. Now, fast forward a little bit. Now it's going to stop, and now it's ready to detect motion again. A little bit about the setup, here's my lever wire connectors. I only have 5 volts going through this and it powers my LED and motors. I use this 5 volt relay to power my LEDs and I got the signal pin connected to pin 2 of the Arduino. I have the positive pin connected to the lever wire connector. The ground is connected to the ground on the Arduino. And the positive wire of the LED ring is connected to the other side of the relay so that it switches on and off when motion is detected. Here's a look at the inside of the head, and this is what I call servo 1 and servo 2. The signal pin for servo 1 is connected to pin 8 on the Arduino, and the signal pin for servo 2 is connected to pin 10. For this, I went with the DF Player Mini for the sound, just because it was easier to set up. I am getting some really good sound out of it when I use a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor and a 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Remember to put a 1.5k ohm resistor on the RX pin, and it's pretty easy to set up. You can use the right and left speaker for this amplifier. I made a marking on the positive side of the screw terminal. For best performance, you want passive speakers with an impedance of either 4 or 8 ohms per channel. It also has a handy dandy onboard manual volume control. The IN1 and IN2 pins are connected to speaker 1 and speaker 2 pins on the DF Player Mini. Here's a look at the controller that comes with the RGB LED ring that I got. This has three buttons on it. You can control blink speed, color, and pattern of the LEDs. I run the wire through the head and I tuck it into the back of the eye like you can see right here. And just by opening the head I can press a button on the controller and change the way the LEDs look and act. Here is a full intact LED ring. You can just break out the outer circle or the inner circle or take whichever circle you want from the ring. You don't have to use them all. The internet says it has 50,000 to 80,000 hours lifespan. I have yet to burn one out, so yeah, they last quite a while. This is just some plastic that I sanded down just for the effect. You'll want to replace that with glass, or frosted glass or something probably. Here are the wires for the LED ring and the ground. The negative goes to ground and then the positive wire here just goes to the back of the uh, 5 volt relay. And you can see what I'm talking about by looking at the purple circles on this diagram. I cut a 14 inch piece of 3 core wire for the motion sensor and it gives me about 12 inches of distance from the board itself. I cut a piece of 3 core wire for each of the two servo motors and it gives me about 16 inches from the bottom of the head to the board. I put pin connectors on the end of the wire and I attach them to the servo motor wire and I will heat shrink those together and it will give me a nice solid hold. Well that's about it for this setup and hopefully the diagrams and the video will help you with any connections that you may have questions about.
Here's the code that I used, and the first thing you'll notice is that I added the UDF Player Mini library for the MP3 player. But before we start, maybe I should go to the Arduino config and, and make sure that you uncomment this line right here if you're not connected to the computer. And if you're using the Adafruit servo driver, make sure you uncomment line 11. Today we're not using that, so we're going to leave it commented. Let's get back here to the code. Now under function prototypes, these prototypes help in defining the functions before they're used in the main program. And that's a good practice for organizing and structuring your code. Then we have what's called the global definitions and variables where we define the motion sensor pin at pin 6 and then we also include motion detection variables. In the setup you'll see that we set the motion sensor pin as an input and since we are using UART communication between the DF player mini and the Arduino board you're going to see two different baud rates here. The 115200 is for debugging and the 9600 is for MP3 player module communication on the TX1 RX1 pins. And we also see if there's MP3 module communication, and we also set the volume between 0 and 30. You'll see the loop continuously checks the motion sensor and manages track playback based on motion detection. It also takes care of all the animations by calling the Botango core Botango loop. The next section is the motion sensor check function, and this sketch reads the state of the motion sensor, and if motion is detected, it updates detection time and triggers the function to start music and animation. Next we see the animation and music trigger function where it initiates whatever animation sequence you exported from the Botango software using Botango Core and a random track is played from the MP3 player module. This last part is the track playback management function where it continuously checks the playback and stops it in 30 seconds where the playback is stopped and the motion detection has been reset. There's been a lot of comments added throughout the code to help clear up any questions you may have about that. And if you want this code, I'm going to post it on the Facebook page, so check for a link in the description. If you have any comments or any ways that you would improve this project, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. There's a lot of different ways you can set this up, so just have fun with it. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video or you found it useful, be sure to click the thumbs up and like the video. And also consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of thing. Check out our Facebook and our other videos here on YouTube. And I'll see you again very soon.